and gentlemen, on behalf of the Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command A4, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Training School Class 07 TAC 24. I am Lieutenant Westerrock, the lead class officer of Class 07 TAC 24. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for morally, mentally, and physically developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. The Class 07 TAC 24 class team also includes Class Officer Lieutenant Sansing, Class Recruit Division Commanders Chief Petty Officer Davis, and Senior Chief Petty Officer Wendell, and Class Drill Instructor Gunnery Sergeant Guerrero. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the National Anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony are as follows. At 1000, Captain Everett Alcorn, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command A4, and Vice Admiral John Buston, Chief of Navy Reserve, will arrive. The guests and class will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem and the invocation. The Commanding Officer and Guest of Honor will then address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the Guest of Honor. The guests will rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. Officer Training Command, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, now the National Anthem. Eternal Father, strong to save, we give you our thanks for binding the restless waves within each of these newly trained naval officers so they can stand proud this day for becoming morally, mentally, and physically developed for the service of our fleet. 
As they prepare for their next evolution in their communities, remind them of what it means to be a leader and to serve with a purpose. Let them embody humility and selflessness. Remind them to value every sailor and civilian they cross paths with each day. Impress upon them the initiative, integrity, accountability, and toughness needed to do the right thing, especially when it's difficult. Embolden them to have ownership of what they are called to do, even when they are called into harm's way. So that these officers look into the horizon, prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead, giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. As we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. In your name we pray. Amen. What a gorgeous morning here. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Mustin, Rear Admiral Garvin, Rear Admiral Mushkin, Captain Frazier, Captain Robinson, distinguished guests, veterans, service members, officer training command staff, families and friends, and most importantly, the soon to be commissioned officers, Officer Candidate School Class 07 TAC 24. Good morning. Good morning, sir! I'm excited to welcome 101 of our newest graduates into one of the most challenging, fulfilling careers, that of a naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the remarkable individuals seated before us. This has enabled them to make sound choices and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family and friends. And on behalf of the Navy and the grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, I am proud of each and every one of you. You've all had many other options in volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you fulfillment. You have completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You have overcome obstacles. Nothing was handed to you except opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. You have seized that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each of you for the significant and memorable achievement. It's now time to embrace a new opportunity, leading what is truly the Navy's most precious resource, sailors and the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You'll be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world and around the clock. Know that you're going to be doing significant and meaningful work for our country. The mission of the Navy is of tremendous importance to our nation and the world. America is counting on you to deter aggression, defend our national security interests, and preserve our way of life. Work hard, learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator, and strive to be the best. Give your best effort because nothing else will suffice. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal conduct and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and in strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You are about to embark on a great adventure, one in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. 
to be unlike any other job you've ever had, and regardless of how long you serve our nation, will most assuredly be a time in your life that you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each of you. I wish you fair winds and the following seas. It is now my privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Vice Admiral John Mustin, Chief of Navy Reserve. Admiral Mustin is a native of Alexandria, Virginia, and continues a long and distinguished family legacy of naval service. He's a graduate of the United States Naval Academy, the Naval Postgraduate School, the Air University's Command and Staff College, and the F.W. Olin Graduate School of Business at Batson College. Sea duty assignments include command of Expeditionary Strike Group 2, Task Force 29, service aboard the USS Donald Cook, and the USS Consent. Phillips affiliated with the Navy Reserve in 2001, he served as Navy Reserve Carrier Strike Group 2, USS George Washington, during Operation Enduring Freedom. Other staff assignments include Navy Reserve Chief of Naval Operations for Plans and Strategy, Maritime Expedition Security Squadron 14, Navy Reserve Carrier Strike Group 10, and Personal Mobilization Team 101. Additionally, he served as the inaugural Corps Combat Ship, the Reserve Enterprise Director. Other command force include Naval Reserve Joint Staff South, Naval Maritime Expeditionary Security Squadron 6, and Inshore Boat Unit 22, including mobilization to Kuwait during operations in Dirty Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. Other flag assignments include Deputy Commander of Naval Surface Forces, Deputy Commander of U.S. Second Fleet, and Vice Commander of U.S. Fleet Forces Command. Admiral Musk became the 15th Chief of Navy Reserve in August of 2020 as Commander of Navy Reserve Force. He leads approximately 59,000 Reserve component personnel who support the Navy, Marine Corps, and Joint Forces. His leadership is essential to providing strategic depth and delivering operational capabilities to the Navy, Marine Corps team, and the Joint Force in time of peace or war, and to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy. We're privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Vice Admiral John Mustin. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. I realize that the longer I, I'm around this business, um, the more I'm reminded that I'm just getting old. Lots of, lots of command here, right? But anyway, listen, good morning. It's wonderful to see such a phenomenal turnout, and I'm thrilled to see my good friend, Rear Admiral Pete Garvin here, the president of the War College, uh, as well as our deputy chief of chaplain for Reserve Matters, Pete Mashinsky. Thank you both for being here as well. Uh, I really want to pay my respects, frankly, to the Officer Training Command staff, to the veterans in the audience, to the family, to the friends, and of course, the stars of this show, the soon-to-be officers who are seated before me. As my first order of business, I want to recognize the class officers, frankly, the class chief petty officers, the academics, instructors, and the drill instructors. The reason for doing that is to be very clear, your collective guidance and mentorship is critical to the professional development of thousands of candidates who come through these doors each year. So thank you for your commitment to excellence. Now I'm thrilled and honored to join you for what's indeed a very special day for our Navy, and of course, a very memorable day for our soon-to-be Naval officers. It's a pleasure to be here as we mark this important transition in the personal and professional lives of the outstanding individuals before us today. Those who are on the verge of joining an elite Navy warfighting team as commissioned officers. This is a momentous day for each of you. It's a proud day. And we're also making history today, honoring the first officers commissioned as training and administration for reserve officers through Officer Candidate School. So well done. You've all worked hard and you've overcome many obstacles. The fact that you're here today celebrating this moment is a remarkable achievement in itself. But make no mistake, your real work begins today. 34 years ago, when I stood in your shoes in Annapolis preparing to take the commissioning oath, with my friend uh, Emil Garvin over there, who was already a seasoned ensign at the time, the world was a very different place. The Navy that we joined in the spring of 1990 would soon be called upon to liberate Kuwait during Operation Desert Storm. And the 1991 collapse of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union would further define a new era, one in which the United States was the world's only superpower, facing a new security environment presenting regional and transnational rather than global threats. In response, we as the Navy developed a new strategy called From the Sea, 
which emphasized littoral warfare and maneuver. And even with nearly 600 ships, our Navy was busy, was operational, it was forward deployed, and it was relevant. Today, though, the world is indeed a different place. We now face two great competitors, not just one. Our Navy is 50% smaller than it was in those glory days, yet certainly remains operationally relevant and even more busy. A quick scan of today's headlines highlights our active and reserve sailors' exceptional response to ongoing hostilities in the South China Sea, the Baltic, the Eastern Mediterranean, the Red Sea, the South China Sea, and the Gulf of Aden. As you prepare to join this team as commissioned officers, I assure you that what you do and will do is important, consequential, and appreciated. Let's be very clear, ladies and gentlemen, based on historical norms, today's security environment is increasingly competitive, competitive faster paced, and even more complex than a short five years ago. And so, we are aggressively modernizing our Navy to address today's global environment. We're building new capabilities and shifting capacity in our fleet to meet the needs of long-term strategic competition. We can no longer wake up hoping that tomorrow looks like yesterday. We recognize the need to transform, to make hard decisions, to prioritize what matters, and to shed legacy processes, force structure, and expectations. We're doing this with urgency to prepare for the future, which means simply that you are joining the Navy wardroom at an incredibly exciting and consequential time. I've said many times before that our Navy has much to be proud of, and we do. We are, after all, the world's premier Navy the crown jewel and the aspirational example to every other Navy in the world. And yet we realize that we still have much to do. So as you embark on your careers as officers, the nation will depend upon you to quickly assimilate into your new assignments and immediately contribute to delivering integrated, all-domain naval power, focus on our core missions of sea control and power projection, and to maintain a clear-eyed resolve to compete deter, and win decisively in combat, competition, or crisis when called upon. You're joining an elite team. The camaraderie that we share amongst those in the sea services is born from the fact that we are bound together by our mutual respect and our awe for the sea. It's the very lifeblood of our clan. And in that, we draw our most sacred commitment, the defense of our nation. In a moment, you're going to take an oath committing yourself to the protection and defense of our nation's constitution. Not a person, not a king, not a political party. And at that moment, when you take that oath, you will recognize the weight and the obligations of the commission are weighty and unyielding, but they're also immensely gratifying. As some of you are well aware, military service can be difficult at times. You're going to spend time away from your family and your friends, and you'll endure long days. You'll face difficult decisions, often that hold life in balance. But you'll also experience countless days marked by a sense of supreme accomplishment, unparalleled esprit de corps, and pure personal enjoyment. Most importantly, you will earn the professional satisfaction that results from knowing that your efforts make a difference in maintaining our way of life and in protecting the American dream. There will be no shortage of challenges along the way. But your approach to these challenges as opportunities to overcome will be the difference between success and failure. And I don't need to remind anyone in this room that in our business, failure is not an option. Regardless of which warfare community you join, and today we have 11 communities represented, you must never stop learning. Commit yourself to mastering your craft, and that includes professional acumen and expertise, stewardship, followership, and leadership alike. There are going to be difficult days, there always are in life, both in and out of uniform. And on those days, I would ask you to think of the 341 million people in the United States who depend on the military to protect their way of life. And remember that less than one half of 1% of this U.S. population is currently serving in uniform. The simple fact that you're here, ready to commission, ready to serve your country, sets you apart immediately. It indicates that you have what it takes to be a naval officer. You know that the nation and the Navy can count on you to rise to those challenges and lead our sailors to victory in combat should the nation ask that of you. 
In closing, and speaking from personal experience, as the years pass and the memories fade, it's doubtful that you're going to remember much of what I've said today. And I don't take it personally. But if you remember anything, let me footstall these words from Fleet Admiral Bull Halsey, the hero of the Pacific during World War II. There are no extraordinary people, just extraordinary circumstances that ordinary people are forced to deal with. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where you come in. It's up to you to be bold enough to leverage these extraordinary circumstances, to bring out the extraordinary talents and the sailors that you're gonna lead, and to find victory in the trials that you'll face together as a team. After you leave this ceremony, and before you report to your first assignment as an officer, take time to think about the type of leader that you're gonna be. And as you progress day by day, tour by tour, year by year, you will continue to grow. You're gonna impact many lives and you'll experience what I have found to be the most rewarding and satisfying profession in this great world. So to each of you soon to be officers, congratulations. I wish you the very, very best. I look forward to serving you. Most importantly, I look forward to seeing you in the fleet and seeing you impact the fleet of the future. So finally, thank you. Thank you to our hosts and our guests, the wonderful families who've traveled from all over this great planet to join us, and mostly to our Navy. We are all here to celebrate these superb officer candidates, and I offer my sincere thanks for all that you do in the fleet, what all of you do at home, and each of you for your continued support of our great sailors. All right, I think I've talked long enough, and it's time to get busy. It's time for us to get to the important part of this ceremony. So God bless you all, God bless our Navy, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to position of attention? Attention! Class, raise your right hand. I state your name. I Have you been appointed an officer in the United States Navy? Have you been appointed an officer in the United States Navy? Do you hereby accept such appointment? Do you hereby accept such appointment? And do solemnly swear. And do solemnly swear that I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservations. Without any mental reservations. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office upon which. Of the office upon which. I am about to enter. I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Right, ready, seat. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized for their achievements while undergoing training while here at Officer Training Command Week Board. The Commander Jack Levitt Leadership Award is presented to the officer chosen by the class for their peers who most inspired their class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. This award is being presented to Ensign Young. The Lieutenant Thomas E.D. Honor Award is presented to the officer who has achieved the highest overall average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. This award is being presented to Warrant Officer Mark Weddy. Warrant Officer Mark Weddy is a distinguished naval graduate. The Rear Admiral Stephen B. Lucy Academics Award is presented to the officer who will achieve the highest academic average. The award is being presented to Warren Officer Juan Magalas. Warren Officer Juan Magalas is a distinguished naval graduate. The Chapel Party United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award is presented to the officer who will achieve the highest overall grade in physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign King. Ensign King is a distinguished naval graduate.
We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Harbaugh. Ensign Morton. Ensign Morton is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Kelly. Ensign Amika. Ensign Davis. Ensign Johnson. Ensign White. Ensign Dula. Ensign Young. Ensign Weaver. Ensign Weaver is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Barnard. Ensign Baird. Ensign Baird. Ensign Fetton. Ensign Byrne. Ward Officer 1, Boyle. Ensign Brown. Ensign Buchanan. Ensign Byers. Ensign Cantu. Ensign Castro. Ensign Cerrone Santiago. Ensign Cerrone Santiago is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Chiluri. Ensign Cochran. Ensign Conway. Ensign Valavala. Ensign D'Ambrosio. Ensign D'Atomo. Ensign Davis Jr. Warren Officer 1, Elon. Ensign Dewey. Ensign Drake. Ensign Elizondo. Ensign Amestra. Ensign Emery. Ensign Estegor. Ensign Garambo. Ensign Garambo is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign George. Ensign Godwin. Ensign Gonzalez. Ensign Hugamis. Ensign Guthrie. Ensign Hanapi. Ensign Hedrick. Ensign Hedrick is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Pilaria. Warrant Officer 1, Jacobs. Ensign Jewell. Ensign Kimmins. Ensign Kirksey. Ensign Crew. Ensign Coolish. Ensign Quecker. Ensign Lepratt. Ensign Lee. Ensign Linky. Ensign Little. Ensign Little is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Laurier. Ensign McCann. Ensign McCann. Warrant Officer 1, McDonald. Ensign Meek. Ensign Meeks. Ensign Miranda. Ensign Moore. Ensign Mooney. Ensign Morse. Ensign Moyer. Ensign Moyer Jr. Ensign Ng. Ensign Nieto. Warrant Officer 1, Paredes. Ensign Barcelona. Ensign Pasqua. Ensign Raymond. Ensign Ramos Oliveras. Ensign Raymond. Ensign Raymond is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Ribbons. Ensign Richardson. Ensign Raccoon Medina. Ensign Ronas. Ensign Savage. Ensign Schroeder. Ensign Shepard. Ensign Sims. Ensign Smith the Fourth. Ensign Smith the Fourth is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Solor. Ensign Speroni. Ensign Steiner. Ensign Thergood. Ensign Thompson. Ensign Valentin. Ensign Van. Ensign Van Horn. Ensign Villanueva. Warrant Officer 1 White. Ensign Patrick. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest officers. Please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal.
without complete the ceremony. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photo and remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field. On behalf of the commanding officer, thank you for attending today's ceremony.